Hello, I'm Lori Trini with Unity College. This is for Animal Nutrition, and I'm going to talk to you today about hypovitaminosis B1. So I'm going to be doing a short presentation about thiamine or vitamin B1 deficiency in captive garter snakes. Themnophis sirtalis is one of the common species of garter snakes, but there are many species within the genus Themnophis, and this is going to apply to all life stages. What causes vitamin B1 deficiency in garters? Well, thiaminase is an enzyme that metabolizes or breaks down thiamine, vitamin B1, into two molecular parts, and it's found in fish that are commonly fed to captive garter snakes. When garter snakes eat this fish, and when they're eating only fish that contains thiaminase, they're not getting vitamin B1 in their diet. This causes a vitamin B1 deficiency. And in garter snakes, this leads to inflammation and destruction of cells in their central nervous system, which results in neurological symptoms, which can be quite severe if it's not rectified right away. These neurologic symptoms can include a head tilt or wobble, torticollis, which is a twisting of the neck, epistotonus, which is stargazing, nervous tremors, incoordination, an inability to right itself if it gets turned upside down, in severe cases, and when it's advanced, it can cause convulsions, blindness, and eventually death. This is what that chemical reaction looks like. The left-hand side of the chemical reaction shows the thiamine, and the arrow represents the action that the thiaminase is causing. And then the right-hand side shows the product of that reaction, which is no longer vitamin B1. This doesn't just happen with garter snakes. It is common also in fish that eat other fish that contain thiaminase and require vitamin B1 in their diet. So here's an example. Alewives produce thiaminase. That's a type of fish that is often eaten by trouts. And when trouts eat that fish, they are not getting the vitamin B1 in their diet that they need. And it causes this same vitamin deficiency that we just talked about in the garter snakes. So this is not a complete list by any means, but I wrote a short paper about this and I'll attach it to my discussion post in case you wanna read more details. But this is just a very brief list of recommended feeder fish for garter snakes. The ones on the left are safe to feed and the ones on the right are unsafe to feed. And unfortunately, goldfish and minnows are very often sold as feeder fish and commonly fed to garter snakes under captive management. That really shouldn't be the case because they contain thiaminase. And if the garter snakes are only eating these feeder fish, like goldfish or minnows or a combination of both, they are going to end up with a vitamin B1 deficiency and those neurologic symptoms that I already discussed. If you want to feed goldfish and minnows to your captive garter snakes in low quantities, you can do that as long as you're feeding these other fish or you're also feeding rodents things like earthworms, other things that the garter fish or that the garter snakes can eat that aren't fish and that they can still get the vitamin B1 from. So what can we do? Well, to prevent B1 hypovitamosis, a vitamin B1 supplement can be added to the snake's food to offset the lack of thiamine. And that would be if you're, for some reason, only feeding those feeder fish that contain thiaminase, like the minnows or the goldfish, which you really shouldn't be if you're if you're keeping captive garters. So again, to prevent the deficiency, you can supplement the diet with a B1 supplement that you could put on those fish before the snakes eat them. But it would be better to feed fish species that have little to no thiaminase enzyme in them or to feed things like earthworms and small rodents to your garter snakes in addition to the fish so that you know that they're getting a good mix of vitamins and minerals. Treatment, if your garter snake actually comes down with this issue, if it's caught early, high doses of vitamin B1 given through an injection can be an effective treatment and the symptoms, the clinical neurologic symptoms typically will reverse. But in very advanced cases, the neurological damage to the brain is just too severe for the nervous system to recover from. So that part of the central nervous system, which is in the brain, the cerebral cortex, actually becomes necrotic and the snake fails to recover and eventually death occurs. 
Here are some resources if you want to learn more, and I'll also attach my notes to this discussion post. I thank you very much for spending the time to learn with me. If you have any questions, I can be reached at lterini20 at unity.edu or through my own website at behavioreducation.org. Thanks again for your time, and please remember to always be kind and love your animals.